Oh, oh, you got one. Oh, 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 you got one. You got one. You got one. You got one. Oh, 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 oh okay. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day where I'm going to be learning some fly fishing, getting out with our boy Weston. What's up, y'all? And uh, he brought out a fly fishing setup for me to actually learn today. So that is the mission. We're going to get out, try to learn some fly fishing techniques. And uh, I guess the whole uh, idea about fly fishing, because it's completely new to me, and I figured why not get out here today and try to make a video so you guys can learn as well. If you're new to fly fishing, you might pick up some things today. Or if uh, you've never tried it, you'll probably learn a little bit like I am going to today. So um, I guess we'll talk a little bit about the setup once we get out there on the water, we don't want to get in the way of these golfers, so let's just meet you guys out there. All right, guys, so we just got out here to the uh, greens. We're going to, I guess, practice some casting because it's new to me. I'm going to let Weston kind of talk a little bit more about this uh, setup because I have no idea what we're doing today. So this sucker right here is an echo base setup. It was like one of the first decent combos that I picked up from Shields locally, and uh, I think it's like considered a six weight, and it's pretty universal for some bass fishing I have found out in my short time fly fishing. And what we're going to do, I just, un uh, I just untied this clouster minnow, our bait for today, going for bass at least. We're going to try and tie on some small flies and at least get some panfish for y'all real quick, have Ryan cast in this thing. But we got to practice the cast first. So we're just going to go straight line. I'm going to pull some of this fly line out here, right? Get some line off of the reel. And what we're going to do is work on our cast without a bait on here. So we're just going to try and dial in a little bit of this right here and get Ryan to be able to make a 20, 30, 40, 50 foot cast real quick and then we'll take it down to the water hopefully catch some fish. Alright so you guys heard that I'm gonna go ahead and just let the uh, chest cam kind of go over the whole uh, learning process and then we might catch back up before we get out there on the water but now you guys know the idea of what's going on so let's get to it. We're just going to uh, you can focus on to like the strip so like whenever you like as soon as you're done casting you want it under two fingers usually two yeah. fingers yep and you're just gonna have this down by the water and you're just gonna be stripping back. So and actually just looking at this guys compared to other rods you're not gonna have the normal little uh, eyelets with the plastic little insert. This is just straight like wire it looks like almost so. Right it's weird especially it's, the front eyelet. Yeah the yeah. front eyelet uh, up here like it's just it's just a little ring <laughs> wow <laughs> i mean so it makes weird. sense because you have the fly line but it's just like completely kind of mind-boggling just seeing that up front compared to the bait cast. yeah 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 all right now let's try to figure this out all right so, so when i'm casting fire. like that yep. yep so one thing you can practice too one thing you can uh, work on is uh That's what a bad. lot of folks will say is proper right so if you can keep it more vertical and just like real tight that's the proper this would be more proper and it'll keep you a tighter loop gotcha Give it a shot, cast some more. All right. See what happens. All right, let's try to go. Yep, so. Like that. Now also, you'll see you hear that whip? Yeah. That means you're not giving it enough time, so you're going too fast with it, okay? So let that line fully extend. Let the line fully extend, then whip. Look at it, yeah. Watch that line fully extend, then bring it forward. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, watch the and line. check this out. I'm noticing something with you now. Going a little high? So you're doing, no. You're doing a little bit of this, like a rainbow. Okay. okay? Think more straight back and forth. That looks good. I'm trying to think like a range of motion. And I see motion. a lot of wrist. Hey, check this out. I see a lot of wrist. Try and think about the arm. So here's what I'm noticing with Ryan right off the bat. It's a whole lot of just the wrist and less of like the whole arm. So if you get the whole arm going, gotcha. you can just go straight forwards and back, right? So you kind of, a lot of people will say keep the wrist locked. I still use my wrist, but just something to think kinda about. Shift then your you're arm. not doing as much of a rainbow motion with the rod. You're really going just straight back and forth. That timing is much better. See now it's like, now you're not going too fast for it. All right guys, just get down here to the spot. We're gonna go ahead and give it a send and uh, see what we can make happen. First attempt fly fishing. Let's get after it. Just as a reference to the camera. <laughs> Almost died. Yeah. Keep filming. You really can't, you almost can't pull out too much. Yeah. I mean, so we'll, we'll say that's probably enough. Okay. So now start doing your whips and you can let a little bit more go on every front cast and try and like when you do bring it forward for that last final cast, try not to point it at the grass too much. Try and point it out. Like, yeah, try and keep it more like off to the right if you can. Yep. Oh, along with that whip, longer with that whip, longer. Yep. Yep. Might be easier if we walk down by the water. You have it, you have it good. Yep. Yep. Let that fall. Okay, so you got yourself a little leaf there. So rod tip down. Oh yeah, you pull, yep, strip you it down. Pull all that line in quick. That way you can just get to it. 
And now, yep, exactly. So now that's how you'll work it, but you got that leaf on there. So go ahead and just raise the rod up now, like vertical, to get that leaf. Because remember, if you pull too much in, it's going to go straight to those guides. So just go ahead and get you a few whips. Get you a few whips, yep. Nice and tight, nice and tight with it. And what I, I'll show you something after this cast. But let, yeah, I was going to say, you're pretty good now. Yeah, go ahead and just let that one fall. Oh, perfect. Rod tip down by the water. I'll go ahead and strip that in slowly. I bet you get, I bet you get a bigger you hit this like top water. Hold on. Yep, yep. Oh, you had one. You had one. Let it go. Let it go. It's, it's over here. It's yeah, over yeah. here. One's going to eat it. Drag it. Keep it tight. Keep it tight, right? Strip a little. Just, have, just be ready. Be ready. All right, so what you can do from here is you can go right into another cast, okay? So check this out. You can lift it up slowly till that fly line's out of the water, then you can whip it back. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Get so it right back in that spot. Right, you can get right back in that action. <laughs> rod tip down, rod tip down. Be ready, you're eyeballing it. Rod tip down, 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 down. Yep. And he's on oh, it. oh, he might even be, I was about to say. And with these small ones, you're not gonna like break the rod if you raise the rod tip up, but you can also pull the line with your hands. You can do either or, kind of. You can do what they call strip set, Mainly for the bass. With these guys, usually you can just lift the rod up and you can kind of start fighting them. So, rod tip down. And when you're ready to go for that next cast, you got enough line out to probably do the ideal. Whoop. Yep. Oh, and what is it? The twice, twice probably. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. I forgot to give you the. Oh, that's all right on the surface. Give it a pop. Give it a nice little pop. Yeah, give it a nice pop. That's one thing that's tough to get used to is always keeping that rod tip down to begin with. I saw you burn it the other day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, this guy's insane. Oh, oh, you got, oh, you got, oh, you, got, <laughs> you didn't even know, dude. He came up and smoked uh -oh. as you were bringing the line out. I was going to make another cast, dude. <laughs> That's insane. You got him. Let's go, guys. Oh, my God. First little bluegill. Oh, intentional fly catch. Right. Let's go, dude. That was the first one that, uh, on a cast you've made, though. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Yo. insane. <laughs> first fish, guys. Uh, I don't even know what to say. That's some bass candy right there, man. All right, hold on. Hi, guys. First one. Sick, dude. On it. Okay. Accidental hook right, set. Get some more. Now here, check this out. Here's one thing I was going to show you, is uh, what you were doing is you were you were kind of using both hands. Uh -huh. Like you keep it under the right. You actually don't have to do that until you like get get to down the cap. So pulling. you can oh oh, you can just use the left hand. Okay. That makes so sense. You can, you can let a little out, let a little out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That makes more sense actually. And then you and then you get it Strip under. Strip it on in. Yep. Oh, you're, 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 you know what I found is you just kind of keep going with it and usually it slows itself out. It's very weird. Very weird in that way. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Dude, one should be hitting that thing. Remember, keep it like up. That way you don't chance getting snagged in one of those bushes right there. Yep, yep. You're bringing it really far down on your forward cast. Yeah, yeah. Give it more time. More time. Remember, let that line. Let that line. Okay, so check this out. <laughs> remember, remember what I said on the casting where you don't have to have all that line out to get the distance? Gotcha. Check this out. Watch this. I'm going to try. Oh, 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 okay, good. We didn't catch him. Okay, look. Watch this though. So what you're doing, for, for one, one thing you're doing is you're bringing the rod tip really low every time you go forward. Gotcha, You gotcha. don't have to do that. Just remember, you don't have to do that except for on the last one. Then you bring it down, right? I need to watch the yeah. line more. That's my problem is I'm not watching the line. That is one right. thing for sure. So watch this. I'm not going to have that much line out, okay? I'm gonna do a couple, couple of these. I've let a little line out that time. So I've got, I've got like 15 feet of that fly line out right now. And look, there's all that down on the ground. Now, when I let it go, I barely it. have any left out here. So I got that distance, even though I didn't have much fly line out. So you don't have to feel like you gotta have all that line out, okay? Yep. Yeah, one, one more. more. Elegant, slowly, slowly. Give it more time. Don't bring it back until it's fully extended, okay? And then look back at it and make sure it's fully extended. Yep, yep, nice. Good. So you would have had more distance on that one too. We just didn't have enough line to pull off the reel. So in the oh, case, like, oh, did I get one? Okay, sorry. I hit it. But no, you're good. Rod tip lower. Cause you got a lot of slack in that, like. Buff. So if you were to get a hit. Oh, oh, oh! You got one. You got one. You got. Oh. You got him. You're on. Bro, this is much better. Look at that. Oh, let's go, boys. <laughs> let's go. This is I'm a monster. This is. I'm a professional on, on angler. Yep. On the fly rod with the light stuff. You can flip it like that. If it was a bass, you want to come you in. Do is you want to. You can pretty much bring that rod vertical because there's so much give in the tip. So you can like bring that rod vertical. What you would not want to do with a bait caster rod, you'd snap it. Gotcha. And then you can kind of go in for the bass. All right, guys. So uh, technically, this is probably our first official bluegill all by ourselves, full distance, full cast, thanks to Weston. And uh, honestly, I'm liking it, man. It's really fun. It seems like it's a lot harder than it is once you actually get out here, but it's just fun in general. So I'm digging it. Second bluegill. Let's keep it going. Ah. My bad. You're getting it. 
Yep. And make that final pass because you got all your line out pretty much. Yep. Good. See the same. Oh, 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 you got it. We're in the strike zone. Number three, dude. Ooh, dude. What's even happening right now? <laughs> This man is a fly fishing machine. He's on fish number three in minutes. Dude, bluegill champ out here, guys. I'm changing my name. <laughs> the money was already spent. Ah! With fly gear. <laughs> right. Merry Dude. Christmas, you filthy animals. <laughs> oh, oh, you got. Oh, you had. Oh. You had him. Dang. Oh, it's so much easier with that thing you told me. The hull. Yeah. But so you're really easier. not doing it very much still either. It's just something to think about, okay? You're, you're <laughs> Ryan's working on the cast. Is it, I can tell he still looks like a rookie. Don't blame me for that. We're just, we're, we're, getting, it we're getting it down over here. <laughs> I'm a rookie myself still, so we're just two rookies out here trying to have a good time. <laughs> I almost, I almost know what I'm doing. Next spot. Check it out, y'all. Security was hot at the last spot. Ryan probably didn't even show us. So we're making our way around town, pond hopping a little bit. Let's, we said, let's break out the little flies. And I know this little spot that's got some bluegill in it. And turns out there's actually bass in here as well. Only a few casts in, literally just arrived. We got our first bass of the evening on today's video uh, on the little guy. Same thing as what Ryan's throwing, basically. So, let's keep chunking it, man. Catch some more bass. I want you to catch one. I could care less about catching these things. I want you to get one, Ryan. <laughs> Cruising! All right, guys, so we're kind of done for the day. We're gonna do a little bit more fishing, probably, but I just wanna go ahead and recap and talk a little bit more about these setups because um, as far as bait caster setups and fishing stuff that I'm used to, they're completely different. These aren't even called combos. These are called outfits. Outfits, <laughs> I, almost, I almost called them uniform. So I'm gonna let Weston kind of talk a little bit more about it kind of uh, go over what the line's called and a little bit more about it so that way you guys have a little more information. Once again, he is not a, uh, a fly a fishing guru. Yeah, yeah, he's not a professional, but he has a little bit more knowledge. You know, he's uh, definitely built some knowledge, you know, practicing this uh, this new method that he's picked up, this fly fishing skill, and I'm just gonna go to let him kind of take over. So let's get to it. Yeah, so uh, I mean, honestly, I started with like a $50 budget kit, by the way. It's not as expensive as you might think. So I went to like Academy and grabbed me like a 30 or $40 setup. And uh, I mean, all there is to it is the line, the reel, the rod, just like anything else. What I found is most common is like a nine foot range and a lot of them are like four pieces. And so you just pop those things together. A lot of those kits actually come with the cheaper ones, specifically is geared towards beginners. And it comes with the fly line and your leader already attached. Oftentimes it is tippet, which is again, that's like that tapered line where it tapers down very nicely so what we're using is fluorocarbon because we're just making ends meet. But the tippet is going to allow that fly to make that nice, elegant presentation, little love tap with the water that those bluegill and, uh, and even the big species love. And so it is a little bit more lifelike and harder to spot the line if you're using the tippet. So that is one thing. Uh, a lot of times those fly guys are using tippet as opposed to just straight fluoro or mono like we are this evening. Now the fly line is usually like I want to say 90 feet and then you also have some backing so there's some backing line on there so if you were to catch a true giant on some of these setups they could be taking all of your fly line out and you get to the backing and you're actually fighting it on the reel where there's drag now a lot of times when you're catching the smaller fish you're just kind of fighting them by hand you're just kind of stripping it in and what i found is best as an all-around uh, rod and reel weight because a lot of times you'll hear this is a common question ryan is like what's the weight the best weight rating for a fly rod it seems like five weight tends to be the most universal across many species. Uh, if you're going for bass, you might think uh, about a six weight, like this setup right here, or an eight weight. And this reel even says six to eight on it because it is geared for fly line, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that could be rated for six weight, seven weight, or eight weight uh, rods. And so you could use this reel with the larger rod if you chose, but this is considered a six weight outfit from the store. He's kind of gone over some of the basics. So some of the stuff that I kind of want to show you guys that are uncommon from your normal fishing. Uh, I kind of talked a little bit out there is going to be the eyelets. Eyelets are just, they're, they're not coated. They don't have the plastic. The line is completely different. Um, the real seats almost seem different. So I just wanted to kind of maybe have uh, Weston kind yeah. of talk a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, that is true. That's something that I didn't even think about. So the real seat is geared towards the very end of the rod as opposed to having some weight. And so you're not like, you're using that butt on some of those bait casters, right? That butt end to actually help you get some distance with your cast and also to help balance out your rod and reel setup. Well, with this, it's so much different. You really have no butt end on these things, except for if you get some of the largest fly setups and you actually have I don't know the reasoning, to be honest. It's like, what is the reasoning? What if the reel was up there? Would it make that big of a difference? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the reels are all the way towards the back. The reel seat acts the same way though. So you just got the one screw that's gonna unlock this right here. You can take that reel off, you could interchange it, and you can toss it back on there. And so one thing that's unique too, Ryan, is this is floating line, and that's most common when you first get started. But there's also sinking lines that you'll use with some flies that are meant for subsurface applications. And so that's a whole nother category of stuff you got to get into. Some folks even have just different spools for their fly reels. So you could have one fly reel, but you could have two spools and you could just change the fly line according to the scenario, almost like how we would use braid and then go to fluorocarbon in certain cases. One important thing to talk about is your, your knot from your fly line to your leader. And I really don't have it dialed in, but the knot is called a nail knot. <laughs> so, so check out the nail knot. It's the best knot. Uh, it, it's probably one of the easiest knots I should say and well known for tying any type of leader to your fly line directly. So the nail knot is something you're gonna look into. The uni knot is what I've been tying to most of these flies as y'all heard earlier. And here's something else. Also, this one has drag. So you can actually crank this up and you can fight some bigger fish. If you get those fish all the way to the reel, so like let's say you're fighting one and all of a sudden he decides to take some line through your hands and he gets all the way to the reel, then you can just genuinely fight the fish on the reel. You're not gonna be doing that a lot with the bluegill. Not happening, right? <laughs> but this actually has the opportunity to crank some drag and catch some larger fish, whereas those beginner kits, a lot of times that $30 to $50 range, you're not going to get that. And so if that fish is running and taking line, you have to physically put your palm on the bottom of the spool to actually help give it a little bit of uh, drag manually. <laughs> so that's something. All right, guys, so Weston's kind of given us a little more in-depth look at this stuff. I'm going to kind of go over the basics. Really, like he said, you got your kind of your reel, you got your rod. Uh, one thing I will say that's genuinely different about this whole thing is how you're using two hands to kind of do everything. It's a lot of whipping, it's a lot of pulling, it's a lot of dragging, setting the hook, it's gonna be a pulling motion. It's something um, that definitely you're gonna have to adjust to and kind of learn. It's, it's more of a craft, like I said, than an actual um, a fishing method. So you're gonna have to definitely adjust and adapt and learn this skill, but it's definitely fun while you're out here too. It's, it's just, it's something that's a little bit more artsy, I would say, um, but you'll enjoy it if you get out here and try. Once again, these are not complete beginner setups, but they are gonna be more of a budget-friendly setup. And this one, I believe, is ranging anywhere from 100 to $180, something like that, and I am loving it. So I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for you guys if you're interested in picking one up. I'll leave it for uh, my setup, and I'll also leave it for Weston's setup. Alrighty, guys, so that is gonna be it for our little day out here fly fishing, at least trying to learn how to fly fish today. Um, we you scored, good job. Yeah, I'll say, scored some good bluegill. We got a nice little technique down. I'm really hoping you guys were able to make something of this video because uh, the main thing was just getting out here, have some fun, and try to show you guys a little bit more about it too. I want to thank our boy Weston for not only uh, getting out here and fishing with us, but kind of showing us the craft and at the same time uh, handing us down this awesome fly fishing setup and uh, flies oh, yeah. that he's going to be giving us. So uh, I'm going to be leaving links below for our boy. You go check out his stuff too. He's got tons of fly fishing videos coming out. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed. See you on the next one. Peace.